Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Check out this video and this guy's reaction to Dave Ramsey. I pay off my house? Never. Why do you hate Dave Ramsey? I don't hate Dave Ramsey, I just hate everything he teaches. He's teaching people to be poor because he wants them to take their 40 years of time that they have to make money and he wants to donate it to getting out of debt and paying crap off. You can't eat no debt. You can't travel on no debt. There's a flaw in the practice. It's everything is about eliminating debt. If you have credit cards that are like at 18, 19, 20%, you should probably get those eliminated. But when people have most moderate debts at four, five, six percent and you fire people up in a frenzy to, oh my gosh, hurry, you shouldn't be able to sleep at night, get your debts paid off as if the world's worst thing. It's called positive arbitrage. I borrow money at 5% all day long and get it making 20%, 30%, 1000%. And when I borrow at five and I'm earning 20, the difference is 15. I'm making 15 on debt. That is a productive debt. It is a good debt. That debt makes me money. And Dave just wants to act like all debt's bad. I'm like, no, no, no. Consumer debt is bad, but debt is what this country is built on. Debt is what the wealthy are built on. Debt is about controlling money to make money. And that has fallen on deaf ears in his community. All right, Kirby, we... We have had conversations on this and I think we've actually made videos uh, on Dave and this kind of topic. I've got a lot of thoughts on this, but I want to hand it off to you before I go down a rabbit trail and not let you talk. No, actually, I'm going to let you go first on this. <laughs> you go first and take the lead. Take the lead. I just want to hear what... You know what I mean? Everybody know my story about Dave Ramsey. So go ahead, take the lead. I think this guy is right and wrong at the same time. And what I mean by that is he's not wrong at all in the sense of what he's saying, explaining debt and his views. But I think that applies to someone who is taking an entrepreneur path and learning financial literacy. In the circumstance of speaking upon his Dave's followers, you know, the people that are hardcore Dave supporters, what they're applying based off of what Dave is teaching them is has made a huge difference in their lives. And it applies to them because they lack that true financial literacy in the sense of what we're um what we understand it to be based off the teachings of Robert Kiyosaki and people of that nature. But Dave's message works. I mean, to say you can't eat and travel off of what Dave teaches off of no debt is ridiculous. Um, you can do a lot of things if you're debt free and a millionaire because of it. It may not be the lifestyle that Grant Cardone has or this guy, but it still works. I mean, Dave Ramsey's message goes to the masses. It doesn't go to every single person out there in the world. But if you follow Dave's message, you'll be su more successful than 99% of the world. So I I think that both him and Dave are right. I don't think that one is right over the other. I think it just depends on what audience it's directed towards. Um, I mean, that's a good insight. Um, Just first breaking down what you used what you said. I don't believe you need to be an entrepreneur to have financial literacy. Um, I believe that you could be successful working a nine to five job uh, and being financially literate to use that, leverage that job to build more money. I mean, not even necessarily to be an entrepreneur, you can leverage the job to invest, you know, max out different retirement platforms, invest in different brokers platforms and invest in you know, stocks, ETFs, and things of that nature still be successful. Um, everybody, like I said earlier, everybody know, you know, I follow Dave Ramsey from step one to step six. Uh, of course, step seven is one that I'm very sensitive on. Uh, so, but I followed him step one to step six, you know, being $250,000 in debt, you know, then reaching millionaire status, following Dave Ramsey's steps religiously. Um, but I'm going to play devil's advocate on this one. I will play devil's advocate and say that this guy is right. Everything you said is true. You know, what he's saying is for people that is financially literate at work. What Dave teaches is for people that really don't have financial education and they need a step-by-step -step method to get stuff done. And the reason why I'm going to take the devil's advocate approach on this is because I've seen it the other way also. I've seen it where 
people get out of debt, either people that I've coached, mentored, or people that followed the Dave Ramsey situation. But the process is so drawn out for them that they revert back into doing stupid things. Also, I mean, Dave Ramsey talk about building momentum, momentum, momentum. But again, he's talking over, you know, 15, 20, 30 year span. And then usually people are still in the cycle, especially once they get out of debt, then now they investing, they see the money, but they can't touch it. I mean, you have to have a level of discipline to see the money and not touch it, to be in your 20s, be in your 30s. And then you're saying, oh, I can't wait till I'm 60 so I can really enjoy it. Yeah, you can move up and work, make more money. But then it's all about how do I acquire the next thing? People, they're a creature of habit. You know, it's very few. It's very few Alex's in the world. It's very few, you know, Kirby's in the world where they can just discipline themselves and be like, okay, I will just delay gratification, delay gratification, delay gratification forever. And I've, like I said, I've seen a lot of people that got debt free, debt, debt Ramsey, and then went on to proceed to get back in debt because they want stuff. I mean, so let's just think about it and break it down a little bit. When you pay off the debt and then now 15% of that goes towards, you know, investing, right? And then the next step, you know, paying for kids college and then you fully fund and, you know, going to spend years upon years to pay off, you know, hard charging to go pay off the, the house. So I know Dave Ramsey talk about, you know, baby steps, 3A, 3B, you know, saving some money for the vacations and things of that nature. But it's a long drawn out process. Like for me, I canceled all the step A, B, C's and all that. It was literally 100% hard charge to fully fund my emergency fund and then straight to paying off, paying off the house or accumulating enough money to just buy a house cash. But for most people, that's a lot of years. Most people already have kids. Most people already, you know, have family situations that they want to do so. So it's a long drawn out process because there could there be more things that you could do. So, I mean, just to not keep this going longer. So the process for me from Dave Ramsey, step one to step seven, I started when I was 27 years old. I got to step seven and paid off my house at 32 years old, right? You know, became a millionaire. That's what, seven years. But that's me hard charging, laser focused, no outside noise. Didn't deal with family, friends, nothing. Didn't go nowhere. That's that's me in that span. For everybody else, it's going to take longer. Way longer. And then the money that I accumulated in that seven years, now I... So let's say, let's just call it a million bucks in that seven years. In the seven years that followed, it was been multiple millions using leverage and debt and things like that. So he is right that there is alternatives. But the one part that everybody seems to not grasp the hold of is when you're talking about different ways to leverage money and make money and do different things alternative to Dave, it also include, yes, but the people that do it, they have to sit there and learn financial literacy to do it. If you don't learn financial literacy, you need to stick to the Dave plan. But besides that, you can get the money way faster if you use leverage. Yeah, I agree. And this reminds me of when I was... I was, you know, when I first started, I was following the Dave Ramsey plan and right. I didn't have any debt. We had our emergency fund built up and we had our house, but to think of like, okay, if I just keep making payments towards the house and stuff, and then I was seeing, you know, more content on acquiring rental properties, but using leverage. And so I saw a lot of opportunities and I asked you like you know is there more like if i want more how do i do it if i'm just stuck here just cash flowing everything or just paying cash for everything and i remember you had asked me you were like you feel stuck don't you and i was like yeah that's how, it's exactly how i feel like you know we were in a good financial spot but it was like 
my growth depended on our active income and mm -hmm. you know i didn't want to be trapped in that either you know i didn't want to be trapped in a nine to five and i didn't want to be dependent on just you know the physical money i can actively make i wanted to make more but in order to push me forward rapidly i needed to use leverage to do so but in doing and needing leverage you weren't just like yeah go ahead and start taking out loans you had then you know guided me from dave ramsey to reading rich dad poor dad and learning about robert kiyosaki and then from there you know it was like that was another eye opener i remember reading that book and you know it was an eye opener enough learning the seven baby steps but then reading rich dad poor dad i was like i had never thought about money this way so you know from there it's just learning a whole different realm right and and that's the thing is you i mean you keep the discipline you keep the principles of dave ramsey uh with that is you're not getting in consumer debt you ain't out there at the chipotles you ain't out there just buying cars and financing trips and things like that your trips are still paid for in cash but when you want to buy assets you want to use leverage or that's what you're doing and that's all i do i mean i still keep the principles of dave ramsey i'm not sitting here with credit card debt up the wazoo and i still if something hits my credit card i'm paying it off i don't want no consumer debt especially paying 19 to 30 percent on a uh, credit card debt everything that i get in debt i mean you could pull my you know my credit report right now everything that's on there is nothing but assets Actually, it's nothing but housing. That's the only thing that's on my credit. If you pull up, if you look at my credit card balance, you know, it's multiple hundreds of thousand dollars of credit available for me through credit cards. The balance is zero. I don't have no no debt sitting on those. I mean, I like you, I use them for, you know, repairs, maintenance issues and things like that. But then I have cash sitting there to uh, fund that, to pay it off. But there's no, nothing extra. I mean, I'm not, saying hey let's go on a disney trip or let's go to japan or let's go to some wild country out there and i'm just saying oh yeah we're just gonna put it on credit card and we'll pay it monthly until it's paid off that's no no that's no bueno so the only thing that we did was just mix the two concepts together as far as the discipline <clears throat> excuse me on the dave ramsey side and not getting a consumer debt and then we just added the aspect of of buying assets you know and not liabilities as far as the you know, Robert Kiyosaki, Grant Cardone, that uh, method methodology when it comes to leveraging, leveraging debt. And he's right. Uh, you know, 4% in debt, you know, you can use that as arbitrage and get, you know, cash on cash returns that's way exceeding the 4% you're paying. But again, it comes back to people that want to understand how finances work and then don't and still have the discipline to stay focused on what the objective is. You can get rich a lot faster using leverage, but if you try to let that spill over to, oh, I can add consumer debt in there, I can add a Birkin bag in there, I can add some red bottoms in there, then you back in the rat race and you just, you hustling backwards. And then you're back in the same situation you was before you even started. And that's where people, that's where most people lose it. But I have seen many of people follow Dave Ramsey and they feel stuck. They feel like they bust their ass to get out of debt and then it feels like they're in the same situation of, oh, I gotta go to work, I gotta go to work to pay off this, pay off this. And, I mean, and that's you know their lack of discipline. But it also feels like once you get past that getting out of debt, and you hurry trying to hurry up and pay off your your house and things like that, they feel like it's another bill to you know appease Dave. And I understand people have that. I mean, me, I didn't have that because I was laser focused. I didn't care about the outside noise, and I damn sure didn't care about trips and appeasing the Joneses. But for most people, they do. And they have that thing. So that's why I just want to take the devil's ever good approach on it this time instead of just following my normal diatribe. But I will always say most people still need to follow Dave Ramsey. And if you want to go use leverage to build wealth, then you need to immerse yourself in financial literacy. Well, that being said, guys, leave us a comment down below on your thoughts. Hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.